guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mr. District Attorney, one of the programs selected to be rebroadcast to our armed forces overseas, is brought to you by Vitalis and Ipana, two famous Bristol Myers products for the protection of good looks. For hair that's well groomed, it's Vitalis and the 60 second workout. For a smile that sparkles, it's Ipana toothpaste and massage. <laughs> Not only to prosecute for the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. Tonight's story begins in a small walk up apartment in your district attorney's city. It's supper time, and a young couple are at the table talking. Rocket was here again. You got any more bread? Here. He said he'd be back. You should have made some gravy for this. I said he's coming back, Eddie. I heard you the first time. Well? I'll be out. Where are you going? No place. I, I'm just out if he comes back. Why? Oh, Ruthie, I told you ten times I don't want to have anything to do with Rocket. Sure. You don't want to have anything to do with Rocket. You don't care. You don't care about making more money, real money. Look, look. If you want me to finish my supper, lay off. I don't care what you do. I don't want to hear any more about Rocket. That's too bad. Ruthie. You're going to hear. Your great friend Joe Herndon went to work for Rocket today. And you know what he's making? A hundred and fifty a week. Doing what? The same thing you are. Not for that, Joe. Why not? It don't add up. Good mechanics are hard to get. It don't add up. I make $65 in a big plant. Rocky's got a back alley joint. How can he pay so much? Well, he just opened. Maybe he wants to make sure it goes. Uh, don't add up. You worry about being a patriot and working in a war plant. His place is a war plant. I'll bet. Well, what if it isn't? What if there is something phony about it? What do you care? It's a chance to make money. We're doing all right. Oh, yeah, we're doing fine. Us and the roaches. Are you going to be a sucker all your life? Are you going to live in a dump like this all your life? I'm sick of it, Eddie. I'm sick of being poor. I'm sick and tired of it. You woke the kid. Yeah. Great for her to be brought up in a hole like this without room to breathe. <laughs> all right. All right. All right, darling. Pour yourself some coffee, Eddie. There you are. Now go to sleep, baby. That's it. Go to sleep, darling. You want some? No. I'll stick to the champagne. Great place to bring up a kid. Freezing in winter, boiling in summer, crawling with dirt the whole year. Is that rocket? Yes. Take the kid. I'll tell him you're out. No, no, no. No, I'll see him. Oh, what is this? What's the matter, Eddie? What is this? What are we doing here, Joe? What's this all about? Well, you got me. Rocket said he wanted a mechanic of new calibration. So for two days, I'm monkeying around on this machine. You can't use it for anything. Can't use any of these machines for anything. What do you care, Eddie? We're getting paid, ain't we? We get paid more, too, boys. Oh, hello, Mr. Rocket. What do you mean, we get paid more? Well, oh, an extra 25 a week. To start, you might say. To start what? Yeah, you're right about these machines, Eddie. They're not much good for anything. But, uh... You boys come out in the back. I'll show you some that are. Oh, I didn't know there was a back to the place, Mr. Rocket. Well, this room is really just for appearances. Showroom, you might say. But in the back, uh, help me move this cabinet, will you? It's not very heavy. No, just a screen to cover this door. 
Come on. Slot machine. Yep. There. See what the trouble is? You mean somebody could win by luck for once. <laughs> they were pretty banged up when we got them. And they look all right now. They are on the outside. The machinery's all off. Until they're fixed. And that's where we come in? That's right. Is this your war plant, Mr. Rocket? You might say. You count me out. No, Eddie. Count me out. Where are you going? Back where I came from. Eddie. You know, you can make 175 here. Work is easy, the hours are short. I'll take 65 in overtime. When? What do you mean? You know the manpower laws, Eddie. You left a war job, and you can't take another for three months. What? He's right, Eddie. So for three months, you might just as well work here and make some easy money. I don't bother about manpower laws. I think you're kind of stuck, Eddie, you might say. just don't know. You just don't know what, Harrington? This manpower shortage. We know there's a real shortage. How can people quit their jobs now? Well, I guess they think the war's almost over. Are they crazy? Well, either that or it's wishful thinking. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Chief. I have some work from both of you. It, that's a surprise. What kind of a case is it, Chief? Robbery. Who was robbed? The city storage yard. What? That's right. It happened a few days ago, but unfortunately, it wasn't brought to my attention until this morning. Well, what on earth would anybody steal from the city storage yard? Slot machine. Uh-oh. Oh. All those machines we confiscated have been taken before there was time to convert them to scrap. Well, I guess that means we'd better get on to look on, huh? Mm. They'll be popping up again all over town. Yes, I want to get them before they're redistributed. Mm. How are you going to do that, Chief? The well, machines aren't any good. They have to be fixed. Uh-huh. And that takes skilled mechanics, huh? Exactly. And they're very hard to get these days. Well? I have a list here of war plants where they employ mechanics who could be used to fix slot machines. I want you both to check these plants and find out if any men have quit recently. And if they have? Find out what they're doing now. I haven't got very much for you, Chief. No, oh, that's too bad, Miss Fenner. There were five of these mechanics who'd left in the last ten days. Mm-hmm. Two of them are out because they're sick, and the other three have left town altogether. Hi, oh, Chief. Oh, Harrington, any luck? You know, I could only find two of these guys who had quit. Mm-hmm. One's sick and the other's not working. Mm-hmm. How'd you make up, Miss Muller? Mm, not much better, Harrington. It... Well, I guess we're at the dead end of that one. Well, maybe my idea wasn't so good after all. Oh, Chief. Yes. Oh, I thought I had something, but I didn't. Did neither of you see any of these men? Huh? No, no, I called them up to. So did I. You know, because of the Manpower Commission, the chances are they wouldn't say they had a new job, even if they had one. Hey, hey, that could be right. Sure. I just wonder if they're really sick. Who? Well, say those two you reported on, Miss Miller. Yes, sir. What were their names? Um, let's see, uh... One was Joe Herndon, and the mm-hmm. other was uh, Eddie Lang. Oh, what if they're not sick? Hey, you got an idea there, Chief. Well, Harrington, suppose you drop around and find out. Right. But more important, yeah. find out if they're spending more money than they used to. Eddie Lang? Yes. My name's Johnson. I'm from the Acme Auto Company. Can I come in? Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> well, this is a nice little place you've got here. Uh, Mr. Johnson. At your service, ma'am. So I'd really like to see your husband. My, my husband? Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I guess he's working, though, huh? At this time of day. Uh, y- yes, that is... Uh... Uh, what? He would be, except he's sick. Oh. 
Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> yes, he's, he's gone to see the doctor. Well, in that case, I won't bother you, ma'am. Well, well uh, what did you want to see him about? Oh, nothing, nothing. My my company's got some wonderful second-hand cars that we can sell now real cheap and uh, on the installment plan, too. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, only 50 bucks a month. Of course, with your husband sick, I guess $50 a month's a lot of money to you. I've always wanted a car. Oh, is that so? Well, maybe when your husband gets better, you... Uh, get... Mr. Johnson. Huh? We... We have the money saved up. Oh, oh, Mrs. Lang, I... I wouldn't want to touch your savings. Oh, not... it's quite a bit. As a matter of fact, we just bought this couch the other day. You did? Uh-huh. Oh, hey, that's a real fine piece of furniture. <laughs> yes. Isn't it? Well, maybe your husband would be interested in a car, then. Well, I think so. Yeah? Well, suppose I drop around tomorrow morning. Well, well Eddie, <laughs> he likes to sleep late. Yes. And then he usually goes for a walk or to the doctor. Oh. But he's always here supper time. I see. Oh, uh, why don't you come around tomorrow night? You'll be sure to get him then. Okay, I'll get him then. <laughs> Hello? Oh, hello, Chief. This is Harrington. Yes, yes. Hey, your hunch was right. I think Lang and Hunden are our boys. Good. Do you want me to bring them in? No, no. I want to find out where they're working and who's at the head of it. Okay. Suppose I tail them tomorrow morning. Yes. And when you find out where they go, call me and I'll have the place raided. <laughs> one's working okay, Eddie. Yeah, yeah, against suckers like us. <laughs> You'll never catch me near one again. Come on, let's get at the next. I'd like to leave them just as they are. Ah, oh, no, Eddie. Don't hand me that stuff again about all the dough we're making. Well, we are, Eddie. Yeah. What happens when they catch up with us, Joe? How's anybody going to catch up with us? Well, suppose they do. Suppose you're crossing the street and you get run over. You can suppose anything if you want to. Well, we're making dough, Eddie, so let's enjoy it. All right, come on, let's test this one. Don't touch that. What? What's the matter, Mr. Rocket? Not so loud. What's up? We have visitors out front. Who? Oh, the police. Police? Shut up. How did you head them off? Why should I talk to them? They know you own the joint anyway. Oh. You don't think I put it in my name, do you? Well, listen, if they come back... They're walking right up here. Is the cannon in front of the door? Yes, just keep still. We're caught here. Shut up. Why don't we go out the back stairs? Because they probably... Joe, you clumsy dumb. Well, they know we're here now. We're just back in there. Come on, we got to get out. Come on. The back stairs? Yeah. What about Rock? What about us, you jerk? Come on. Help me in here in a minute. Never mind. Here we are. Up this way. Hurry. All right, you two. All right, nothing. Copy. Oh. What are you standing there for? Come on. Joe, come on, Eddie. Joe, look at him. Listen, Eddie. He slammed his head against that pipe, Joe. If he's dead. Well, if he is, then we gotta get out of here. Come on. If Eddie's suspicions are right, if the police officer is dead. Your district attorney is faced with another serious problem. We'll hear the new developments in just a moment. But first, a footnote on colors. Green stands for envy. Yellow stands for cowardliness. And pink must stand for romance, judging from all my pink Valentine cards. Well, perhaps. Though pink certainly doesn't stand for romance when it's pink on your toothbrush. Now, that calls for a quick trip. Where? A trip to your dentist. He may say your gums are sensitive. And, like so many dentists, he may suggest the helpful stimulation of Ipana toothpaste and gum massage. Is that so? Yes, a 1944 survey, carefully conducted by impartial authorities, reveals that seven in ten dentists advise regular gum massage. Also, that twice as many dentists personally use Ipana as any other dentifrice. Gum massage and eye panel. Yes. A winning smile and sparkling teeth depend so much on healthy gums. 
And today's soft foods often fail to give our gums the exercise they need to stay firm and strong. So help give your gums that exercise with Ipana and massage. Now every time you brush your teeth with Ipana toothpaste, massage a little extra Ipana onto your gums. Remember, for firmer gums, brighter teeth, a more sparkling smile, start now to use Ipana toothpaste and massage. Now back to Mr. District Attorney. No word from the hospital yet, Chief. Oh, thank you, Miss Williams. That cop never did regain consciousness, did he? No. no his skull was badly fractured. What are his chances of pulling through? Very slim, the doctor said. If he dies? There's a murder charge. Yeah, Chief, I wish you'd let me pick up Lang and Herndon. I'd have told you, Harrington. Yeah, I know, but if that poor guy dies... Lang and Herndon are being watched. They can't get away. I, know. I want to find out who their boss is, or was. Well, we could question them, Chief. We could find well, out. maybe, but maybe this way and they'll lead us to whoever he is. I just keep thinking of that poor policeman. How do you mean, Miss Miller? Well, if he'd been found earlier... He would have had a better chance, wouldn't he, Chief? Mm, probably. Mm-hmm. Why wasn't he found right away, Chief? I don't know. My guess is that his body must have been hidden by that door leading to the back stairs. Hmm? Oh, I get it. And when the cops opened it, he was behind it and they ran through without seeing him, huh? Yeah. Of course, I have an idea. Of... Shall I get it, Chief? That's yeah, probably the hospital. I'll take it. All right. District Attorney's Office. Speaking. Yes? I see. Thank you. Well, that's that. Oh. Yeah. Then it's a murder charge. Right. For Lang or Herndon? Or both. Shall I bring him in, Chief? No. What? What are we going to do? Nothing, Harrington. We're just going to sit tight. <laughs> Don't you eat something, Eddie? I'm not hungry. Well, walking back and forth like that isn't going to help. That cop died. You didn't mean to do it. If he dies, I... Nobody will know you did it. I'll know I did it. I'll know. Who's that? I don't know. Eddie. Stay on that phone. I'm afraid to answer. Maybe it's Joe. Maybe it's the police. Maybe it's Santa Claus. Answer Eddie. Come on. Hello? Who is it? It's Rocket. Rocket. Hello? Yeah? Oh. Okay. I said okay. Goodbye. The guy's dead. How does he know? He said he was hiding in the place when I took him out, and he was dead then. Oh, Eddie. You know what else he said? You know what else my boss, Mr. Rocket, said? He said you were a murderer, Eddie, you might say. So I don't think you'd better say anything to the cops about me or anything. I think you'd better beat it, Eddie. Get out of town, you might say. Eddie! Oh, Eddie! Wish I'd never gotten in, is it? I wish I'd stayed where I was. Oh, it was my fault. It was mine, too. No, no. I, I nagged you into it. I don't blame well, you. Well, you should. I can't. <laughs> To say I can't. <laughs> if I turn on you, I got nothing. I got nothing at all. Oh, Eddie, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm so sorry. Baby, baby, we're in an awful mess. Oh. We're in a jam, baby. What am I going to do? We're going to get out of here. Where are we going? I don't know. Let's get the baby and get out of here. We haven't any dough. We've got 200. We can't get far on that. Can't get far enough on any kind of dough. Yes, we can. I can't. I can't ever... I did it, and I know I did it, Rufy. Eddie. Eddie, what are you going to do? 
Well, I can fix Rocket's wagon anyway. What do you mean? I can do one good thing anyway. Betty, where are you going? Where do you think? I'm going to give myself up. Why did you go to work for Rocket? More dough. But you were working in a war plant, weren't you? Yes, sir. Maybe he thought Rocket's place was a war plant. Well... Oh, you didn't really know, did you? No, sir. Mm-hmm. About leaving the plant, I, uh... I had figured I was just one guy. Yeah, sure. Start multiplying yourself by all the others who think the same way, and you've got ten and a hundred and then thousand. Then pretty soon you've got a production slow up and a war that goes on longer than it should. I, I didn't think of that. You didn't think of lots of things when you got yourself in this mess? No, I guess not. Well. Shall I take him away, Chief? No, no, no. One more thing, Eddie. You said before that when you punched that policeman, he fell down the stairs and hit the back of his head against that pipe. Yes, sir. Then you ran right up. Yes, sir. I, I didn't mean to kill him. You didn't kill him. What? He's not dead. But I thought... Yes, I know, but Rocket was lying when he said that man was dead. The newspaper... It was can't... a false report. That policeman's a liar, Eddie. He's not dead? That's right. Yes, yes. yes. Carrington, I want to take Eddie home in one of our cars. Yeah, but she... And right away. Yes, sir. And you're not to leave your house, Eddie. No, sir. What's going to happen to well, me? We'll worry about that later. Yes, sir. That's Thank all. you. Thank you. Chief, That's but... all, Harrington. But... policeman is dead. Yes, I know. But Rocket's the man I'm after. I'm pretty sure the news that Eddie Lang was brought home safely with a police escort will get to him. Then he'll get to Eddie Lang. And you'll get to him. Right. But, Chief, you don't just want him for the slot machine racket, do you? No. No, I want him for much more. I don't either, baby. It doesn't make sense. There's something wrong someplace. Look, all I know is the guy's not dead. I'm not a murderer. There's something screwy about them sending me home, but I didn't kill anyone, Ruthie. I I didn't kill anyone. You don't know what it feels like to think that you did, and then you... Oh, honey, I'm so glad. Oh, my. I just don't care about... What? I was going to say that I don't care about anything. But I do. What do you mean? I care about going to jail. Eddie. I don't know just what they're up to, but they're not going to let me off, baby. I guess not. Sucker. What? I was a member saying to you, you want to be a sucker all your life. Well, I guess when you're poor... You were set up to be a sucker. Oh, now what? Oh, there was an auto salesman around yesterday. I guess we're not going to need a car. Well, I better answer. Uh, Eddie. Yeah? If it's the police... Yeah? Did you tell them about Joe? No, but they knew. Hello, Eddie. What do you want, Rocket? Get out of here. In time, Mrs. Lang. You got a little business first, you might say. Eddie. It's a nice looking knife you got, Rocket. Mm-hmm. Why don't you cut your throat with it? What'd you tell the DA, Eddie? What do you care? Why'd he send you home in a big parade, Eddie? Because I'm a hero. You're a squealer. What did you tell him? Come on! Don't be frightened, baby. What did you tell him? Well, if you move that knife back an inch, I think I could talk better. Thanks. I told him the truth, Rocket. You're working for me? Yeah. Setting slot machines? Yeah. Tell me you killed that cop? Yeah. Only the cop isn't dead. What? You heard. That's a lie. No, it's true, Rocket. It can't be. He has to be dead. He has to be dead. Why? Right, he has to be dead, Rocket. But come on in, Harrington. and keep him covered. All right. I'm all right, Rocket. Why does he have to be dead? I don't like guns, D.A. Too noisy. It won't go off if you behave. Why does that policeman have to be dead, Rocket? Suppose you tell me. 
Because you killed him, you might say. Your district attorney will be back in just a moment to tell you the reason he knew Rocket was the murderer and the final outcome of the case. But first, the story of Mrs. Gates, the lady who hadn't heard. Right now, she's going into a neighborhood store. And now to the center pharmacy. Next to the chain store down a few blocks. Then across the street to the variety store. Just a moment, Mrs. Gates. Now, what is the trouble? Well, I've been all over town trying to find a bottle of Vitalis for my husband. He's let his hair go without Vitalis long enough. Why, Mrs. Gates, haven't you heard? Heard what? Servicemen now get the entire supply of Vitalis, the famous hair grooming preparation. They do? Yes. You see, because of wartime shortages, there isn't enough Vitalis to meet the wants of civilians, plus men in the armed forces. Well, naturally, we're giving servicemen first call on the limited supply. So your husband will have to go without until wartime shortages are relieved. But when shortages are relieved, your husband will be able to get the same genuine vitalis that was the standby of so many for so long. Now, here is your district attorney. Well, ladies and gentlemen, both Eddie Lang and Joe Herndon were sent to prison for short terms. It was hard on their families, but they had knowingly broken the law. Justice required, and they paid for their misdeeds. The rocket, however, was sent to the chair for murder. Chief, how did you know Eddie Lang didn't kill that policeman? And because the man died from a wound in the front of his skull. The pipe he knocked the back of his head against just scratched him. And later I found a blood-stained crowbar in Rocket's plant. Yeah, but Chief, did you guess what happened before Rocket confessed? Well, no, Harrington. At first I thought Eddie Lang had used the crowbar to kill the officer so he couldn't be identified. And then when I heard his story, I believed it and realized that probably someone else had been hiding in the cellar. And that was Rocket? Yeah. As we know now, the police were so busy chasing Lang and Herndon, they didn't see Rocket. And by the time he decided it was safe to beat it, the cop came too. Yes, unfortunately... And so Rocket used the crowbar. Yeah, he was a pretty nasty character all around. Well, what about next week's case, Chief? Well, friends, we have quite a different type of story for you next week. It's the case of the Boogie Woogie murder. I hope you'll all join us for it. And so until then, thank you and good night. Characters of the night's dramatization are fictitious and any resemblance to names of living persons or actual places is purely coincidental. Our stars were Jay Justin in the title role, Glenn Doyle as Harrington, and Vicki Pola as Miss Miller. The music was under the direction of Peter Van Steeden, and the author was Arthur Lawrence. And don't forget, when you think of well-groomed hair, remember Vitalis. When you think of a winning smile, remember I Ipana Toothpaste. Vitalis and Ipana, two famous Bristol Myers products, which each week bring you Mr. District Attorney. Hold it. A young lady has just made a big discovery. Yes, I'm in love, and I think George is just about perfect, even though he isn't what you'd call handsome. Well, George's romance proves again that a clean-shaven, masculine look counts more than a handsome face. Men, rely on Ingram's rich lather for close, smooth shaves yourself. Comfortable shaves, too. Ingram helps condition your face for the razor, for cool, comfortable shaving. Enjoy cooling Ingram. I-N-G-R-A-M. Ingram Shaving Cream. This is the National Broadcasting Company.